Hey folks, welcome back to Dominique Does Life. You may be wondering why I'm coming at you right now, just seven hours before I'm gonna go on at 7.30 a.m. CST. I'm gonna be going on today, uh, July 19th, Friday, July 19th, 2019, at 7.30 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time on Spreaker, on the free Spreaker app. And we're gonna be talking about how to identify a narcissist. And we're going to be talking about logical fallacies. And I would love for you guys to listen in on any of the podcasting platforms that you prefer. Because I'm on just about all of them. But if you'd like to weigh in and join in the live discussion via the chat tab in the upper right hand side of your app. Once you have followed me on the free Spreaker app. S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, -E -E the free Spreaker app at Dominique Does Life. You can go ahead and open that app and go to the chat tab and weigh in live on the air. No, you don't have to put your makeup on or look fancy because you're not going to be seen. You're just going to be heard. And I would love for you guys to give me some live feedback and let me know what your thoughts are. Now, Again, I'm sure you guys are wondering, what am I doing on the air like seven hours before I'm supposed to be on for a regular show? Aren't I, shouldn't I be in bed sleeping? The answer is I rarely sleep because I work constantly and am in constant chronic pain. But aside from that, there was something on my mind and I just wanted to share it and kind of share this tribute to somebody I love and lost. Okay, and I'd love to hold space here in the chat section. You guys can weigh in in the chat section after a show is already archived. It, it At that point, it works on the free Spreaker app at Dominique Does Life, once you follow me there. It does work as a, uh, like a regular commenting section, a regular comment section, like on Discuss or you know, Reddit or something like that, right? So please feel free to still comment. Like this isn't a live show because I am discussing a topic that's very emotional. Um, you know, this isn't a live show, but you can weigh in and tell me your experiences because I want to hold space for you guys too. Maybe you have some regrets about someone or uh, more than one person you've loved and lost or Maybe you have some things that you're just really, really grateful for and thankful for that you would love to share. And I just want to hold space for that. I felt like that was important. So let's do that. Uh, so my friend, the one that I'm going to be holding space for and doing a tribute to right now was called Joseph Chastain. Joey was a filmmaker Joey was a real progressive champion and activist and organizer. Joe, I, I, you guys, I don't even know how to describe Joey, but Joey was somebody who genuinely, genuinely cared about the world around him and the people in it. He wanted, and not just wanted, but needed, I think, to improve the world around him the world he lived in and the, that his loved ones lived in for the better. That was just him. Joey was a really amazing person. And before I do my little tribute here, I'm going to read a Facebook post I made as a tribute to him that I shared on his Facebook page. Um, I just want to say that Joey was killed in May. He was killed uh, while on foot. He was, he was walking to work and was struck by a car. And there's been just a really sharp rise in automobile deaths, uh, pedestrian deaths from being hit by automobiles. And a lot of people are, you know, utilizing sort of that conjecture that's out there about how it's, you know, it's cell phones and this and that and people aren't paying attention. And while that is really important 
to take a look at, and that's one important factor. I don't believe that that is the main factor in why people like Joey are, you know, people like Joey, meaning just anyone who's out there walking in the street, uh, who has the right of way, by the way, per our laws in the U.S., um, you know, why people like him are getting struck down and killed. I, I think the reason for that is that uh, we don't have the appropriate crossing spaces and and laws and safe spaces for pedestrians. Like, for instance, in my neck of the woods in Chicago, um, and even now in some of the surrounding suburbs, we are starting to take this a little bit more seriously. We're starting to offer lit crosswalks with like flashing lights and sort of like stop signs in Chicago proper. We have some really awesome um, walking bridges so that you can cross five and six lane roads and do it safely, which is what Joey was trying to do when he was unfortunately struck and killed. And I think that's one way that we can improve things. We can lobby our lawmakers. We can look at city planning and um, it, we can look at our municipal plans and either step up and run for office ourselves or we can pressure our lawmakers to make safer spaces for pedestrians as we continue to work on infrastructure. So I wanted to put that out there because I think if we can prevent even one similar death, we need to do that, okay? Now for my Facebook post slash tribute to Joey. I may or may not put this in my blog. You know, I don't, I have... I don't know. I have some opposition in my mind to like putting it anywhere where it could be monetized because I'm not trying to monetize my grief. And maybe that in and of itself is reason enough to put it on my blog because clearly I'm not doing it to like, again, monetize my grief. I just want to share the story. It may or may not be on the blog. I'm going to give it some more thought and see what feels right. Um, But without further ado, I'm missing Joseph Chastain today. Joey was such a good guy. There were things I wish I would have said and listened to, things I wish we could have discussed, and even just chatting one last time would have been nice. And it bothers me that neither of us got to do that. You see, Joey died. For those of my friends who do not know, Joey was tragically hit by a car and killed in May. If I'm being honest, which I aim to be in life, I've got to admit that I was a bit snappish with poor Joey the last time we talked privately. Joey could get on your nerves like nobody, I ain't gonna lie, but my god was he a genuine person. Dude asked me to Google something for him after I had just told him in that same conversation not just a few seconds before that I was currently working an 18-hour day and that I was stressed and that I really needed to get back to work. And by the way, who in the crap delegates Googling to someone else? What a goof. Let alone a friend who just told you they're working 18 hours currently right now. But... That was Joey. And, you know, with Joey, that that sort of coin that shows both sides of life or of who someone is as a human being, that was a weighted coin, you guys. So things like that were on one side. But... There was this other side of the coin, and and this was the weighted side, where he was, I mean, like, that weighted side just outweighed any of the things that could annoy the crap out of you about Joey, right? So, continuing on to to read this, um, but that was Joey. But he 
what he had thought he would say. I was like, brother, you gotta be fucking kidding me right now. I love you, but I ain't Googling shit. Ain't gonna happen. It was things like that that would just grind your gears when talking to Joey. But those traits were emblematic of something much deeper. And here's where we get to the weighted side of the coin. Much deeper and more profoundly beautiful. That he was a genuine person who had no filter, no ego, no agenda, and sadly, oftentimes, no boundaries. He approached life like a child. Like a young child. He did. He loved without reservation. Always. He was quick to forgive. He never held grudges. Ever. Ever. He was always so worried about his friends and his loved ones. He genuinely, deeply cared about other people. He, he even told me, like, he struggled with depression. And I know he struggled with, um, with, with BPD as well. And he even told me, he, there were times where he didn't know where he ended and other people began. Which I'm sure could be very painful and confusing in life. But he sort of did this in just a very loving way. He wasn't passive-aggressive. He wasn't aggressive. And he wasn't passive. He was just loving. He was assertive. He was kind. And he just... There was something really beautiful about him and really innocent. He did love without reservation. He did worry about his friends and his loved ones. He cared so much about the world and everyone in it. He always had a smile on his face. He wanted everyone around him, everyone he loved, and just everyone in general. Like, he genuinely wanted them. All of us, all of you listening right now. To be safe happy, healthy, and well. He was a beautiful human being. Sorry, guys. He fought so, so hard for the progressive cause. He was, he was a true grassroots organizer and activist. And he genuinely fought to change this world, his world, our world, for the better. He genuinely worked to change our world for the better. I, he cared about everyone in it. I cannot emphasize that enough. Okay. I can't. He... (laughs) Like, he just wanted peace and love. He was never egotistical about change. He, He didn't have to have his own agenda. He didn't have to have recognition. He didn't backstab or backbite or second guess. He just was love. He had such a big heart. And like I said, I really wish I would have talked to him again before he left this world. But of course, no one knew. No one knew. It was unexpected. I really miss him. And... What I want you to do when you leave this podcast today is I want you to go out and tell your people how much you love them. I wish to God I could have told my dear sister friend Leanne Kennedy Lockhart who who died in, in 2016 several days after her birthday and you know of suicide I wish I could have told her how much I loved her one more time and I wish I could have done that with Joey and I'm so incredibly grateful 
that I was able to do that with my dad when he died. So, tell your people. Don't wait. Don't worry about what they're going to think. Do it now. And do it today. I just want to end this by saying be at rest, Brother Joey, and be at peace.